Alrighty, so the great sword is finally in the game, and my initial impressions are um, very, very good after getting some uh, testing in on the public test server with it. But before we even get into the great sword or the abilities or anything like that, the first thing I want to say is the thing I think they really nailed uh, with how they designed the weapon is how they decided to scale the weapon. Um, now, it scales off of two stats, but currently in the game, um, every weapon that scales with two stats, like the rapier, uh, it doesn't scale on those stats evenly. So the rapier is, is more weighted heavily towards dex, and what that means is per point of dex, you get more damage than you would per point of intelligence. Um, and that's going to influence um, what kind of build you're able to do with the weapon. But... Um, the great sword actually scales evenly with strength or dex. Um, so not only does that allow you many more ways to build the weapon, um, you can do it either strength or dex uh, to pair it with most of the other weapons in the game, which also scale with strength or dex. Um, but because it scales evenly with either of those two stats, it makes it to where you can pretty much almost pair it with any other weapon in the game. Um, it's going to be hard to do certain combinations, of course, um, but it's going to be a lot easier to pair something like uh, the Great Sword with a off-scaling weapon like um, the Void Gauntlet than it would be uh, the Rapier or the uh, Sword and Shield, let's say. And it's actually something that I'm pretty excited to try with my Paladin build that I just did. Um, I think the Great Sword is actually going to work quite well and it's going to be a bit of a different playstyle but a effective one um nonetheless with that build um but yeah right off the bat that's the first thing that i found was really really good about the way they designed the weapon but um taking a look at the actual uh weapon itself it's the first dance weapon that we've gotten in the game and um for it being the first dance weapon um i think they did a hell of a good job with it um, before getting my hands on it, when we first got to see it and I was able to read, uh, some of the passives and abilities, I was a little bit underwhelmed, um, if I'm being honest, just by first reading the, the two stances, but, um, after getting to play with it for a little bit, um, it is probably one of the most fun weapons in the game for me personally so far, besides the rapier, um, they did a really, really, really good job of identifying each stance. Um, initially, when I looked at it, uh, you know, onslaught stance increases your damage, but you take more. Defined stance decreases, but you uh, deal less. Um, at first glance, those two things make it seem like um, it's not that much of a of a ability or a, a new thing to have in the game. Um, but the major things about these two stances is uh, guard point and um, quick charge. You can do some crazy things uh, with both of these. And um, yeah, it's uh, pretty wild. The initial speed of a charge attack on the Grey Sword is decently slow, as you can see here. Um, but as you... As it says there, it doubles it, but um, until you actually use it and see how actually fast the attacks are, um, considering that these are heavy attacks, that we are going to be able to buff through other passes in the Great Sword Tree and be able to get a lot of damage out of, um, it is quite a, uh, a wild passive and probably my favorite part of the Great Sword Tree. Um, but it obviously does come at a cost as you do take 15% increased damage as well. And similarly to the um, uh, Defiant Stance here, um, Guard Point is something that is, at first glance and with first testing, felt underwhelming to me. Um, because if you take a look, the animation there actually finishes um, before you finish charging. So my thought was that you only have that much amount of time to be able to block an attack, which you can do. It is possible to do in PVP, uh, and I've done it a couple of times. 
um, but it's not something that is reliable. Um, but after testing, just as the passive says there, it blocks incoming tax the entire duration um, while you're charging the attack. So the entire time I'm charging that attack, you're blocking attacks. And um, I haven't been able to test it with like hard stuns like uh, the shield basher, like the hammer stun. Um, but it blocks abilities um, and the full damage from it. And you, it, it pretty much allows you to, to set up crazy situations where um, you can bait your opponents into attacking you while you're charging up their attacks and do other passes, which I'll kind of get into here in a second, opens up a lot of burst. Um, so the two stances are really 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 cool and they are different and have an identity and are very um useful for the weapon in my initial testing um but getting into some of the passives pretty much every single passive on these trees is um insane which is good and bad good because you don't want to have you know passives that nobody wants to use because it takes away from build variety um but it is bad because it's going to make it really, really hard to choose uh, what passives you're going to want to get when making builds. Um, but taking a look at the Onslaught Tree first, some of the ones that kind of stood out to me, as I mentioned, you can attack very, very fastly um, when you're in Path of Onslaught. And uh, the first passive here gives you 15% uh, armor penetration just right out of the gate. Um, so if you're in Onslaught stance, you're getting 15% increased damage. And your heavy attacks are um, penetrating 50% of their armor, um, which is insane. Swift Onslaught is a little mini keen speed, which is um, definitely needed because there's almost no mobility on the weapon. Um, but I think if it had mobility as well, this would just be a, a broken weapon. Um, so the fact that this and Relentless Rush is pretty much your only sources of mobility are the thing that I think balances it out. Um, but, um, keen posture here after gaining onslaught stance, which you can do at will, um, you get a guaranteed crit, uh, which just increases your damage overall so much. Um, the critical comeback is, uh, really, really, really nice. The health regen, I think is about 90 to hundred health, um, per second. And then you get five stamina per second as well whether you're blocking or charging a heavy attack in a uh, path of onslaught. Um, so a really, really, really good passive as well. Um, I'm going to take a look at aggressive shift and the guarded shift here in a second here, but um, crush the weak, depending on the build, or even with this build, you'll pretty much always be able to apply a debuff with this weapon um, and with other weapons. Uh, just get gives you more crit chance, which is really nice. And then step and strike, uh, a really, really nice ability, or a passive, excuse me. You get a 10% empower on your next three hits after dodging, and then those attacks also restore 10 stamina, which offsets the stamina that you lose for charging heavy attacks uh, with quick charge. So um, a very, very, very nice passive here. Um, and then taking a look at the Defiance Tree, um, Perfect Vigilance, um, a bunch of fortify fortify is going to be a pretty big theme uh on this side of the tree wary posture um again another huge amount of damage reduction uh which you can again do at will because it happens once you switch stances blade honing is pretty nice unflinching blade pretty much grants grit to non-strength builds which is something that we don't have in the game yet which is very very nice so if you're running a dex based great sword build, like I'm gonna probably try first here, um, we now gain access to grit, which is really nice, and it also applies a bleed, um, and then also arrow deflection, which enables um, another form of blocking ranged attacks because currently the only one is um, using shields. So that is a very very nice and welcome passive to have on the great sword, um, and then faultless defender. Another passive here that kind of rewards timing. If you can time a block for right when you get or attack is about to come in, then you take less stamina damage and you apply a rend. Um, 
So which can stack up to three times. So a really, really, really good passive here. Both the final passives in the trees here are um, pretty insane. But um, taking a look at aggressive shift and uh, guarded shift. Again, when I first took a look at the trees and the abilities, I was um, trying to figure out what kind of builds I would make and how the weapon was going to function. Um, and both of these things, both of these passives are what kind of alleviated my worries uh, with the weapon. Essentially, if you're trying to run a more heavy defined setup or a heavier um, onslaught setup, you still have access to both stances, uh, which is amazing. Um, the one that I've been using more so is aggressive shift, and um, it's actually pretty insane. Um, so even if you're running, let's say, a full defined setup, um, not only do you still have access to aggressive shift, um, or sorry, um, path of onslaught, but um, the thing about the abilities is all the abilities here put you in onslaught stance, but they don't apply until the ability ends. So. Let's say I'm I just switched to my great sword and I'm not in a stance or I'm in defensive stance. I have to use this ability to go into onslaught stance, but um that ability that I just used is not being buffed by the damage being in the stance. So what you can do with passes like this is time your abilities um after heavy attacks. So if I use a heavy attack into an ability, um I'm now already in onslaught stance and this ability now gets buffed um, by 15%. Uh, and similarly to the defiance abilities, let's say I wanted to try to use an ability like Steadfast Strike. If I were to go for a heavy before I use this, this ability is now being buffed by 15%. Um, and then it will put me back into defiance stance uh, once the ability ends. So you actually have quite a few ways to stand switch on the weapon um you're not just locked behind the abilities themselves um using either aggressive shift or guarded shift where uh you block for two seconds and it puts you in defiant stance um it still allows you to be flexible with the weapon and uh be in control of when you're in each stance which is uh needed and very 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 nice to the weapon and i'm still finding uh, new ways to use both of these but um yeah, all of the passives are pretty much insane on the weapons. Unrelenting Assault um, on the Onslaught tree here. You pretty much get cooldowns per attack, which is uh, pretty nuts. Um, but I'm not sure which I'm going to choose because you also heal for 5% of your damage um, with Undying. And um, attacking within 3 seconds of blocking gives you 15% instead. Um, so you actually gain a lot of access to heals. I think something like on my Paladin build, this is going to work very, very well um, because healing is already a theme of that build. So the fact that we can get more healing through our other weapon um, is going to just play into the weapon or into the build even more. So I'm pretty excited uh, to test this with that. But taking a look at the abilities now, um, starting out with the Onslaught Tree, the, the first thing I want to say, honestly, is um, they did a really, really good job of giving all of the abilities on the Great Sword Tree um, value and use in multiple situations and, and builds. It, um, it makes me really happy to, um, while I've been using the weapon and testing it out, I've been really pleased with the fact that the Devs seem to be, um, you know, learning from, and I don't even really want to say mistakes, but some of the shortcomings of the game. Um, one of those being a lot of the weapons in the game, entire halves of the tree uh, of some of the weapons haven't been used pretty much ever because the other half of the weapon is that much better. Um, and it's definitely been something that they've been trying to uh, mend and resolve over time. Um, but it's uh, something that's pretty hard to do without redesigning um, entire abilities. Um, so the fact that when designing and being able to start fresh out of the gate, that was something that they wanted to make sure wasn't an issue is really, really good to see. Um, so yeah, every single ability here is um, very, very good. But starting out with Crosscut. 
Crosscut is a um, actually pretty powerful ability. My myself, I didn't get um, to use this ability yet. Um, I've been testing this with the rapier, and um, there's a couple of different abilities that I, I was using with my setup, which I'll kind of get into in a bit here. But um, I did have a lot of people using this on me, and it actually does um, come out fairly quickly. And in the heat of combat, when you're using your own abilities and there's um, different effects going off, it's hard to notice um, when somebody's even started to use this ability. Um, by the time you notice, they've already gotten the first two slashes out and um, you're about to get hit by the third hit, which does a ton of damage. Um, when you use or when you get um, all the passive from it, you get grit, which prevents you from getting staggered, which is very, very nice. Um, but the big thing about it is uh, cross execution. So being an onslaught stance, we already have 15% increased damage on the ability. Um, depending on um, whether or not you used it right after going into onslaught stance, you will probably get uh, your king posture on that. Um, and as I mentioned, it's a fairly quick ability. So if especially if you're using an ability yourself where you're locked into an animation and you haven't noticed that they started to use crosscut, you are definitely going to get hit by that third hit. Um, so we have a ton of damage um, buffing it from just our tree. And then um, it also gets essentially turned into an execute because uh, if you have somebody down to just 75% health, um, if you're in onslaught stance, which you would want to be when using this, um, you get an additional like 100% uh, increased base damage on the ability, which is insane. I can't tell you how many times I've been um, in the middle of a fight, didn't realize that they started to use this ability, and I just get bopped by the uh, the final hit of this. Um, it does a lot of damage. So crosscut um, is a really really nice ability, and uh, I think we're gonna end up seeing this on quite a few builds for sure. Um, it's definitely gonna be something that I want to end up using on my um, paladin build because having execute um, is just really really valuable when it comes to a uh, relentless rush this seemed to me like the uh the least appealing of the three especially considering that the build that i was trying this out with was uh rapier um, and mobility wasn't something that i was worried about um even that being the case though um this is still a really powerful ability if you're in a situation where you're using this as a frontline fighter, um, enemies are going to be grouped up almost all the time um, when you're in OPRs or in group fights and stuff like that. So being able to apply a slow onto everybody in an area is very, very powerful. You get a empower off of using it. And then I think that adaptive rush is probably going to be the more appealing of the two perks. Relentless Refresh can definitely be nice because you can use this ability as like a chase down uh, execute um, and then being able to get that cooldown refresher. But um, Adaptive Rush, I feel, is going to be a really, really, really nice passive on this um, because you have more flexibility with how you use the ability. So if you're being more aggressive and you're in Onslaught stance trying to chase people down or even set them up for CC, um, you can root an entire group of enemies that are clumped up, which is uh, really, really powerful. Um, and then defensively, you can use it to heal, which stacks with um, other things like your Undying Defiance. Um, so a very, very powerful passive for a really good ability. And then taking a look at Skyward Slash, um, I think this is probably the only controversial ability on the uh, Greatsword, as it is uh, a little bit slower, um, and you're not guaranteed the damage on Skyfall Sword. Um, but after using it a bit and having it used against me, um, this is a very, very, very powerful ability um, and all parts of it. And I'm going to kind of break that down here. Um, so right off the bat, not being in any stance, just using the ability, the first part of the ability where you um, use the upward slash, you're applying two stacks of rent. Um, so you have a... An ability that does a decent amount of damage and applies two stacks of rend um, just at whim. So 
already that makes this ability um, very, very powerful. But if you're an onslaught stance, that now applies an additional stack of rent. Um, so being that I was trying this with a rapier build and rend isn't something that we have access to on demand, um, I wanted to definitely take use of this ability. Um, and the first hit actually comes out fairly quickly and uh, is not as telegraphed. So being able to apply three stacks of rend is um, really, really nice. Um, but then when it comes to Skyfall Sword, I found in testing that even though that hit the ability is a little bit slower and more telegraphed there is multiple situations when you can still get the hit on this because it is a ability that you can decide the timing of um and because of that if people um try to anticipate when you're going to use it and they dodge early and you wait till the last second to use the actual follow-up attack you can still land the hit on this and the same thing if they try to dodge late. If you use it right away, before they land that, or before they get the dodge off, um, it'll still hit them. There's been plenty of times uh, when I thought I'd dodge this ability and uh, was still hit by it. On top of that, the actual range of the ability is quite far. Um, there was a time in an arena when I got hit by, I thought I was out of range because I had uh, made distance from the first hit and still got hit by the follow-up attack. Um, so the range on the secondary part of the ability is actually quite far as well. Um, so even though the ability is slower, I think they did a really good job of making it still feel um, viable and useful. And then that third passive there um, gives it even more de uh, utility and debuffs. Um, so we're applying a 20% disease debuff for 10 seconds. Um, the only thing I did not test or see any anybody else using, so I wasn't able to notice, is the follow-up attack now turns it into a 3 meter um, radius. But if you take a look at the ability, it does kind of look like the ranged part of that hit is still happening. Um, it's hard to tell because even without that passive, um, it's not as telegraphed and you don't know you're going to get hit right there with it um so it's something that i would need to test on somebody but um yeah a very 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 powerful ability nonetheless now taking a look at uh these defiance abilities while the onslaught abilities were you know rather straightforward um but all very very powerful in their own ways um all of the defiance abilities have a ton of utility built into them and um I'm going to find it very hard to see many great sword builds um, not using at minimum one of these abilities. Um, they all are very, very good. And I found um, multiple situations to use um, all of these abilities. But we're going to take a look at Calamity Counter last. Taking a look at Steadfast Strike first. Um, in my opinion, this is probably one of the best uh just base abilities um on the great sword it was definitely my one of my favorite abilities to use by far um the ability by itself not even looking at any of the passives here um has a ton of things built into it right off the bat um it is a two hit ability that um staggers and then pulls uh that in itself already makes this um, a incredibly powerful ability and gives you a ton of applications in different situations for you to use this, both defensively and offensively. Um, when you have somebody aggressing on you, if you're on the back foot, the fact that this pretty much halts people's movement and prevents them from um, performing any actions for um, the duration of the ability um, makes it a very, very powerful defensive tool to kind of hold momentum. Um, and then it puts you into the fine stance when the ability ends, which gives you all of those defensive buffs uh, from those passives and uh, being in defiant stance. On top of that, it uh, restores 20 stamina on each of the hits. So what that allows you to do is um, it gives you a little bit more freedom with your, your dodges especially given the fact that um, this iteration of the 
the public test realm was to test the early leveling experience and we're not all on level 60 characters with uh all of our gear and and perks having something like this was incredibly useful early um being that on light armor you only have two dodges um but even with all of those uh perks that we end up getting i still think this is going to be a very very powerful ability um but taking a look at just the first passive here um the first strike heals you for half of the damage um, which will end up stacking with our uh, Undying Defiance here. Um, it also applies two stacks of bleed, which is nice, um, but then it also reduces the cooldown of all of your other abilities by 20%. Um, so yeah, definitely one of my favorite abilities here. Um, very, very powerful and uh, very useful in a multitude of great sword builds, whether you're going more tanky or more offensive. Roaring Rupture, um, also one of my favorite abilities on the Greatsword. Um, you stab the ground and do a AoE that does a respectable amount of damage and um, gives you Fortify um, per foe hit. That only stacks up to three times. Um, so another incredibly um, powerful defensive ability for, um, again, a multitude of situations. The fact that it gives you fortify on um, on hit is really nice, and it also puts you into a defiant stance um, when it ends. Purifying roar, access to a cleanse, which is something that we only have on um, the ice gauntlet, I believe. I'm not sure if there's one on the life staff, but um, cleanse is incredibly powerful in really any PvP situation. Um, so a very 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 nice passive there. And the final part that I ended up going for was um, Adaptive Rupture. I think you can find use for Intimidating Roar for sure, um, but I wanted to go for Adaptive Rupture because uh, just more situations and more um, utility for the ability there. So um, if you're on the back foot and you want to uh, make a little bit of space, it is really good for that. Um, but I found you can combo... Uh, the pull very very nicely um there's a lot of situations where um i would go for a, a heavy attack or a um a, something in for, from onslaught stance into defined stance and it makes it to where um not only does it make the ability do more damage because we're getting that increased damage from our onslaught stance um but it uh then puts us back into defined stance um, because we will usually have somebody in close range. And being that we're on light armor, um, I really like the fact that I can switch between um, different stances. And and uh, the really cool thing about this, the tree, honestly, is the fact that we can use onslaught stance to buff the damage of our defined abilities and then um, switch back to defined stance when we need to. But um, yeah, really, probably a personal favorite of mine as well. And then taking a look at Calamity Counter. Um, the first sort of counter ability that we have in the game besides parry. And um, it functions quite differently and they're going to help out in different situations. Um, comparing the two, I think, head to head, it depends on how you look at it. Um, you know, I think... You could definitely make an argument for saying that parry is stronger than um, Calamity Counter just for the fact that it uh, will give you a hard stun. Um, but Calamity Counter is almost like a different uh, ability that I would say. I ended up um, using both on my build because they serve different purposes, I found. Um, not only does this do an AoE, um, and if you actually take multiple hits, um, provides a really, really nice stagger and knockback. Um, the actual thing that's built into this ability that I think that makes it very, very strong, and it's going to be um, really interesting to see how it's used in PvP, is the fact that you block for two seconds. Um, you block all attacks for two seconds. Um, parry only blocks a single attack and then... 
that triggers the stun on the ability. Um, but as you're gonna see here in this clip, um, especially abilities that are multi-hitting abilities, um, you can end up blocking entire abilities, which then also fully procs Calamity Counter, which gives it uh, the knockback. Um, on top of that, it has Grit, and it puts you into Defiant Stance when it ends. Um, but yeah, a very, very powerful ability, and I think um, it's going to be interesting to see how this ends up being used uh, in endgame PvP. But um, yeah, all of the abilities are very, very cool. The build that I ended up trying first um, on the PTR ended up being a Great Sword and Rapier build. I ended up going for a Grace setup. Um, I really like the idea of building around Grace just for the simple fact that we had uh, Flesh, and it is a really nice uh, mobility ability, and it's something that the Grace Sword does not have. So I think Grace is a nice pairing um, with the Great Sword. I'm kind of thinking of like a. Uh, dueler or like a kind of more of a brawly build with the rapier um and th the fact that we have repost and calamity counter is uh makes this very 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 powerful up close and gives us um quite a bit of tankiness that we did not have before being that we're in light armor um and the initial setup that i tried to go for was um skyward slash um with, I believe, Roaring Rupture and uh, Guarded Shift. Or, I'm sorry, Steadfast Strike. Um, and this is probably going to be the type of setup that I go for, either this or Calamity. Um, but the thing that I ended up finding out very, very quickly is, and something that I forgot, was how squishy um, Light Armor is in the early game. Um we don't even have um, PvP gear yet that g gives us uh, resilience. Um, so we're pretty much wearing wet paper. Um, so while this is a setup that I kind of wanted to try, I ended up going for a straight up just um, defiance um, setup. Now, because I mentioned like before, we still have access to Onslaught. Um, this is kind of what our setup ended up looking like. Um, the idea behind everything was um, to try to play for um, outnumbered fighting. Now, I don't have enough perks to uh, or points to get everything yet. Um, but the with the points that I had, this is kind of the idea that I want to try to go for. Um, as I mentioned, Steadfast Strike is a very, very powerful defensive ability. We can use Aggressive Shift to um, increase the damage on this and all of our other abilities and then put us back into to, uh, Define Sense when we need. Um, Air Deflection just to help out with um, anybody who's using a bow, although I didn't really run into much. Almost everybody was using a, uh, a great sword in the PTR that I've run into so far. Um, Faultless Defender, being that we didn't have access to Rend anymore, I wanted to have something that can give us Rend. Um, so I found this to be quite useful as well. But um, yeah, Calamity Counter, and then I decided to put the rest of my points into Roaring Rupture, get that cleanse, and then Adaptive Rupture. But um, yeah, we're going to take a look at some of the fights that I ended up getting into. Honestly, I didn't find too too much pvp that uh yet as a lot of people are kind of just leveling up and testing out the weapon but um here are a few of the fights that i did end up getting into so as i mentioned i didn't really get into much pvp yet during the uh ptr as a lot of people are just leveling up um but the one player that i did end up getting a few duels against is using um, both Crosscut and Skyward Slash, and he's in a medium armor setup. So we're going to get to see um, a bit of a different playstyle with the Greatsword at least, but um, starting out with the first fight here, you see I end up just taking both Skyward Slash and uh, Crosscut to the face. He is running Blunderbuss with his Greatsword, um, at least for the first couple of fights here. 
Um, but we managed to trade a couple of attacks after we get um, blown up by that great sword. But again, we just take a skyward to the face. And you see, I even try to dodge the second part of that hit there. Um, but we still get hit by it. He follows up with some really good pressure with the great sword. And we end up getting uh, taken off for that first duel there. But you see um, the uh, offensive side of the tree of the great sword uh, is more than viable. I've been seeing a lot of people say that. Um, they don't think it's going to be good, um, but you're going to see throughout these fights here that is is more than a viable option. Um, but jumping into the second fight here, we jump in. Um, I try to go for a uh, pull with our uh, rupture there, but we are in our defiance stance, so it ends up pushing him away. Um, and just to get, uh, I guess, his cooldown there, a little bit of health back, he goes for a little bit of a retreat here. Um, but we chase him down and... Uh, Re reading that he's gonna go for uh, something there he goes for the um steadfast strike we uh, are able to dodge that and um he kind of ends up getting trapped in the corner there we put in a little bit of pressure in but um he manages to uh escape by chaining those medium armor hops um in a 1v1 situation i think medium armor versus light armor especially at this stage where we're both uh in our level 20s with like no real PvP gear on. Medium armor is definitely going to be uh, the better setup here. But we take another Skyward to the face. But we follow up with a Steadfast. Stagger him a little bit. Um, get him quite low. And we try to follow up with a little bit of pressure here. Um, and we use that Rapier to close the distance. Um, to make up for what that Greatsword doesn't have. And uh, these uh, Skeletons kind of just keep getting in the way of our um, our hits. They're not like... I, I don't think we would have hit him there. But... We try to proc the onslaught stance off of the skeleton and uh, see if we can follow up with that. But um, we're gonna go do ahead a little bit of chasing here. Being that we have the rapier, we're gonna be able to uh, close that distance eventually. As we do though, he um, does get end up uh, making a little bit more distance with that um, net shot. But um, being that uh, we are in light armor, like I said, it's only gonna be a matter of time. And the other thing that I didn't mention about uh, Calamity Counter that Repost doesn't have is you can do things like that. You can use it offensively. Um, and you can cancel into the attack part of the ability rather quickly. So you see we jump in, cancel the light attack into the Calamity Counter attack, and we're able to get two fairly quick attacks in there. Um, but jumping into the third duel healer, I've managed to get the timing down on uh, Skyward Slash a little bit better. Um, and we managed to dodge the second hit of that. Um, and you see I'm trying to utilize guard point a little bit more here. So I tried to charge my heavy there uh, in time to block the ability. But we don't. Um, I go for the Calamity counter this time and block the final hit of Crosscut. Um, so we are utilizing uh, a little bit more of the defensive side of the Greatsword. Um, but we do end up losing that trade. Um, but we follow up with the Steadfast to pull him in a little bit. And right there you see I managed to time the uh, guard point way better that time pretty much negate the damage and we go in for a trade go in for the pull of the uh rupture end up getting it very very close um but we follow up with pressure instead of trying to go for a heal after that trade and uh, we end up winning that duel but jumping into the uh, next fight we uh again dodge the skyward slash managed to negate a bit of damage with the calamity counter but he uh has switched to rapier at this point uh, we get caught by a riposte um, and try to go for a little bit of a pushback on with our rupture there and get some breathing room. And uh, we're kind of put back into a little bit of a neutral state at this point. Um, but there you see I do end up getting hit with Skyward Slash even though it looks like I dodge it. And then we take quite a bit of damage there. We go for a parry. Um, but he, we both are able to read each other's parry um, quite well and uh, don't really get, end up getting hit by too much of those. Uh, throughout the fight but we are on the back foot here we go for a steadfast to kind of just halt his movement there and uh we managed to dodge uh the skyward go for a parry we actually managed to land it this time i go for a uh pull with the rupture but he parries it and gets a, a really nice counter with that um and we're gonna follow up with the rapier pressure just to uh, not really give him any breathing room um again staggering with that steadfast just to give us a little bit of breathing room here he goes for the cross cut and we timed the parry really really well to uh negate the damage on the final strike of that but he is aware of it and kind of dodges back and uh we're in a really really um 
fun kind of back and forth here as we uh, both have similar options available to us. Um, just one of us being more defensive with the great sword and one of us being more offensive. But we chase him down, get hit with both hits of that Skyfall, but we use the Steadfast to follow up and uh, put the damage back onto him and kind of halt his momentum. Both go in for a trade with the Rapier and we just barely win uh, out on the duel there, but you, we end up getting taken out by one of the skeletons who uh, had been shooting us there, but a really, really nice fight. And then jumping into the next one here, um, now we're kind of both at a point where we are um, aware of uh, both options. Uh, the fights kind of are becoming more and more interesting here. Um, I try to go for a guard point uh, hit there, but the entire time during that combo, I'm not able to um, actually get into Defiant Stance. So we take a ton of damage as we're in Onslaught Stance the entire time. You're able to flip the pressure and put a little bit of damage back into him, but uh, a really, really bad trade for us there. We go for the parry, and somehow the stun doesn't go through the grit, which I believe it should. Um, and then we take another Skyfall just to the face, so just a ton of pressure here. The parry is able to kind of uh, make up for the fact that he uh, uses all his options on his greatsword. And uh, we're kind of left to just make some distance with our flesh here and try to generate a little bit of health here. And again, it looks like we're not able to stun through crosscut uh, grit um, with our parry. But we go for a Calamity there. Does a good job of backing up into his uh, repost and uh, kind of negates that. But we've regenerated a little bit of health here um, as the skeleton kind of makes his way into the middle of the fight here. And he staggers us, which allows him to kind of follow up with the steadfast there. And uh, again, we get hit by the skeleton and uh, off of the skeleton's hit there. He does a really good job of, of, of uh, following up with the great sword abilities and he takes that fight there. Um, but jumping into the next one. We land a pretty nice hit with uh, to start the fight out, and we use our onslaught stance to get a bit of damage with our steadfast. And um, following up during that, we did a good job right there of switching stances, as um, we we're able to evenly trade with them that time, um, where we pretty much shouldn't have been that we're in light armor. Um, but we just get hit with a really, really nasty cross cut slash there, and you see just how much damage those offensive great sword abilities can do. Um, as a, it's a rather quick fight that time. Jumping into the next fight, I learned that you, the higher percentage chance you have of dodging Skyfall is if you just try to dodge to the side. Um, so we start doing that a little bit more, and uh, I'm able to avoid the damage of that as we win this trade. Dodge after that parry just to not get stunned, and we just have him outside of the range of the pole there. Um, and as I try to go for an onslaught uh, rupture, but um, he manages to space it quite well. Goes for the Skyward, and again, you see if I dodge outside to the uh, left or right of the ability, we can pretty reliably dodge it, but we take the whole cross cut to our face. Does a lot of damage to us, and we're uh, put on the back foot. We're able to kind of switch the momentum a little bit with our parry, but um, he's able to space himself out and uh, not take too much damage. But um, we do have him on the back foot. I'm trying to stay aggressive on him, but that steadfast strike is just so good at switching the momentum when you have somebody on you. And as I push in aggressively for him there, he uses the steadfast to switch that pressure on us, and uh, we end up taking quite a bit of damage as he takes that second fight there. But jumping into the final fight here, uh, we end up finding each other again. He uh, opens up with his steadfast just to uh, halt our movement there, and uh, we try to parry the skyfall, go for the calamity to negate that crosscut, and uh, even though we are quite low here, we're able to uh, put a decent amount of momentum into him there. And uh, we do get the pull, but he dodges right after the pull. Um, so he is able to make the distance out of that. Um, but we do have him quite low, even though uh, he's able to make distance. We still do damage with that rupture. And we try to follow up with um, some pressure here. Parry that Skyfall Sword again. He goes for the cross cut right after, and we do a good job of evading it with our evade this time. But we do end up getting caught by a nasty parry. He follows, uh, follows it up with a great sword attack, and uh, we're left um, on the back foot quite a bit here. And I go for a Calamity there, but um, he reads it and does a good job of spacing that out. And I try to go for a little flush around the corner there, but it takes me off the edge. But um, we're following it up. Um, being that we are uh, a little bit more healthy on health right now, I've, I want to see if I can uh, close this fight out. We again are able to parry the final hit of that cross cut as you can't dodge out of it. And follow up with some pressure with the great sword. He tries to make some distance with his flesh, and we follow it up with our own. I try to go for the uh, the pull there, and uh, he parries it, and then I go for it again. But we're out of uh, stance at that point. Um, 
but again, we get the parry, the skeleton knocks him out of it, but we're able to pull him there with the steadfast strike and uh, finish him out there. But a uh, GG's to that opponent there, man. Just a ton of fun fights um, and able to get some some really good testing in with the uh, greatsword. I really, really like the setup that I was running. Um, I think when I am able to test this out on a uh, on my actual character, I would definitely um, try to mix things up some more. And uh, it would be interesting to see how it feels once we're able to get um, some full points maxed out. But um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I know it's a really, really long video, but um, I wanted to give you guys a really good uh, breakdown of my thoughts of the weapon. Um, if any of you guys have tried it out on the PTR, let me know how it's been for you. Um, but uh, as always, thank you guys so, so much for watching and have a great day.